is how <laughs> man hands. How do we do this? How do we do this? <laughs> How do you make the sound? The so like oh, like, like do you make the noise too? <laughs> what happened to that boy? Don't get me started because you know I love me some rap. So <laughs> hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sandy, and on this channel we talk about all things interior design. As you can see, I am not alone on my channel today. I am joined by the wonderful Leah Alexander, the principal designer of Beauty is Abundant. <laughs> How are you today, Leah? I am great. Here's to looking at you, kid. Um, I am <laughs> very happy to be here. You know that I've been wanting to be part of the amazing Sandy Santalos YouTube channel for for a long time so I'm super excited you know just glad to be here I'm hot we talked about it so I turned off yes. the AC for the special occasion I also and did heat's just getting getting up there and we'll just, yes. yeah if you see me doing you know one of these numbers I also might <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right well I'm super happy that you're here with us I've wanted you on the channel for a long time and I hope to continue having you on the channel and that everyone really enjoys everything that you have to say you're a fountain of knowledge, and I cannot wait to share that with everyone today. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to be, be interviewing Leah about her design business and how she got started, where she's at now. You guys, uh, I asked, I polled you, everyone, and asked a bunch of DMs about, um, asked you to send me DMs about questions you want answered. So please stick around to the end because we're going to be going through those DMs, and she's going to be answering all of the things that you guys want to know. So my first question for you, where I want to start is, how, how long have you been in business for yourself? Yes, so Beauty is Abundant, which is my interior design firm, will turn two on August 15th. I'm so excited. Two years has come and gone like that. Two years? You've got a toddler. I have a little baby. <laughs> yes, I sure do. And it's not going to be the terrible twos. It's going to be the terrific twos. I've already put that in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> terrific twos. That's great. Yeah, you don't want terrible when it comes to your business. <laughs> Absolutely not. You, as having your own business, where did you get your experience? And uh, did you go to school? Are you self-taught? How, how did all of that accumulate to you starting your own business? Yes. Yeah, so before I started Beauty is Abundant, I had been working in the design community for 10 years. So now with Beauty is Abundant, it makes it closer to 12. Um, so a lot of on-the-job training, right? So I, right out of university, I got a job at a, um, a bath design company. So fixtures, plumbing, tile, um, and then some, some art pieces, just this amazing artful company with um, designers and architects that they, that they worked with. So that was kind of my introduction to design, and thankfully it was a, an international company, so I got to travel with work, um, you know, early 20s, straight out of university, and just really see manufacturing techniques, um, see designs in process and things like that and then just kind of continued from there with on the job training and then as I got near a decade I started getting formal education you know so lead certification and you know I went to art institute which is where we met and yeah uh, you know drafting classes and and then software you know so I started getting into the sketch up and you know touched on the AutoCAD and the you know these different programs so it's really been a combination of on the job and then um, job sponsored, continuing education, higher education and formal education in the design school. I, I love that you said that because uh, a lot of people uh, don't know that that is an option to them sometimes that you can take just like individual classes because that's how Leah and I met. She was taking a drafting class, just a drafting class at school. And then I was at that time going to the Art Institute for a bachelor's. So, um, and then she just ended up being in my class. We sat across from each other and it's history. <laughs> uh, so you've taken those individual classes as far yeah. as uh, for design, but what yeah. is your official degree? And you said you were at a university. What did you study in university? Yes, yeah. So I studied sociology and communication at San Diego State University and um, 
you'd be surprised how many degrees lend themselves to being a great designer, you know, so it's whether you're understanding people, human psychology, how they want to be spoken to, how they want to interact with you, um, what are identifying their wants and their needs and um, that in design, you know, you're serving their aspirations, you're serving what they want their home life to look like, their, you know, family life and things like that. So that's been like incredible. It's just so instrumental, you know, in business. I have a lot of friends who in design have uh, degrees in business and that serves them as well because interior design is a business. It is a business. So I love that you said that. I just want to drive that point home to everybody. You can have a degree in something totally different and then pivot and that everything that you most a lot of what you learned uh, that isn't necessarily super technical to that degree, but just in the process of like getting that is going to be applied to your design business or any kind of design experience that you want. The things that you, you didn't like waste your time. <laughs> and I don't no. want people to feel like they did that. Yeah, you know, I studied um, my social degrees in PR. And a lot of what I've learned in PR and communications and all the writing classes I had to take has transferred well to one starting my YouTube channel. And uh, when I was in school doing design things, there's so much that I had learned from being in school for PR that applied and was applicable in that way. So you can definitely pivot and learn from a different industry, you guys. You absolutely can, absolutely. When you were getting all of this on the job training, you were learning, you know, manufacturing and, and getting to travel. I think you went to Australia, was it, with, mm -hmm. with work? Yes, mm -hmm. and Spain as well. Yeah. And when you were in Spain, when you launched your website, I remember. It was. It was, it was ah. amazing. Yeah. So yeah Spain, Australia, Italy, and then throughout the United States. So whether trade shows or um, conferences, things like that, you know, Miami, mm -hmm. Vegas, yeah. Denver. So what do you feel like it was those experiences that gave you the confidence to start your own business? Where, do you, where did that confidence come from? Absolutely. The confidence, you know, it's the way the beauty is abundant started was so organic and such a life thing, you know, so it more so than it just being, hey, this is, I have all this confidence and with it, I'm going to start my business. Like it didn't start like that. It became a matter of having learned so much over that 10 years that I felt really small within the confines of my day, my, my job at the time, which was working for someone else. And, you know, my design work and the relationships that I was nurturing were in essence, the companies. And I just, I felt like my potential was kind of going to waste, maybe like 30 or 40% of it was being put to good use. And so it just came to a breaking point where I said, like, you know what? Um, yeah, the confidence, you know, and the, the, I'm equipped enough to, put all of myself to use, you know, and let me just try that out because I'm too size bold and um, whatever confidence I'm lacking, I will learn what, what is required and kind of fill in the blanks. Oh, I love hearing you say that because you're, you're, you're not just confident in what you do know, but you're confident that you'll figure it out. You know, you're going to fill in those blanks. You're going to, you know, wherever those holes are, I'm going to, I'm going to know. I'm sure someone's asked you something at some point on a project and you thought to yourself, maybe I don't actually don't know that. But you give an answer like, you know, I'll have something for you in the next couple of days. Right. And in my mind, I'm like, wait, is that a thing? Wait, what? You go home and you're like Googling like, oh my God. <laughs> but you know, yeah. But like you said, you know, for customer facing, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Let me, let me get back with you, you know, and, and then you do. <laughs> so the confidence is a mixture of uh, not just the experiences that you've had. Okay, so I, I know these things and I know that I could, uh, that I'm technically capable of committing them, but also within, you wanted to use your full potential and you felt like you weren't using that full potential at where you were before. Yeah. Where, um, where, what kind of job, what kind of job did you have before to actually starting your own business? Yes, yes. So I was working at a kitchen and bath design showroom. So I was doing everything i mean i was doing hand sketches i was doing computer renderings within that company's um proprietary software mm -hmm. you know, to do the bathroom layout you know whether it's a standing shower double vanity floating vanity 
you know, these kinds of things like that, wall mounted toilet, you know, whatever kinds of things, medicine cabinet, regular mirror, and then kitchen, full kitchen design down to the hardware, down to the interior organization, um, and all the plumbing, all the amazing nitty gritty, they're some of the most intricate parts of the home. So really, really getting to the nuts and bolts of that. And that, you know, equipped me. So, you know, that really did give me some confidence in some of those really particular areas. areas. That's I learned so much from you as far as kitchen and bath. All the time we would, well, we'll go to places and Leah will be like, oh, that's a, this kind of edge and that's a, this kind of edge and this is, and I'm like, what? Oh my God, I have no idea. She knows so much technical stuff about kitchens and bathrooms. I think that I always learn something every time I'm with you. Yeah. Which I really enjoy. Ditto. Absolute ditto. A real concern for people when they start their own business is where are they going to find their clients? How are they going to get work? So was that a concern of yours? And how, how did you navigate that? How do you find your clients? That's, a, that's such a great question. And, you know, I hate when people give the, like, the super successful people and designers and whoever who are just like, you know, like they just kind of like started coming. One day I woke up and like I just started rolling in, you know, like I don't even, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to like do all this work now. You know, people literally give answers like that. And I'm like, yes, what? They do. what? Like, no, but what though? Like how? And so, how did you get um, <laughs> like, did you call them or did they call like, what happened? And um, so they make it seem like clients fall out of the sky. Yeah, no, they do. They do. And the reason I say that that's annoying is because it actually does happen. And, you know, I, um, towards the beginning of starting Beauty is Abundant, I was really fortunate to have a friend who needed, she ha she basically kind of was the, the go between, between a builder and me to choose finishes on a home before it was put on the market. And it was just this amazing, you know, fortunate, uh, opportunity for me that, like I said, happened within about three weeks of me starting Beauty is Abundant that I got that call and that's incredible. Um, but social media and my my website and my blog were already in place before I started Beauty is Abundant, like a year or so before I started, I had started putting content out there. And so I really think that putting content out there that begins to establish you as an authority is very helpful. That way it's not just like, who is this girl? You know, they can go and they can see a few things that you've done or that you have been able to speak intelligently to. So content is very helpful. I don't really do advertising and content is still pivotal in my business now. Um, and the nurturing relationships, I'm just like a huge proponent of showing up from the very beginning of every relationship. Every introduction is an opportunity. I mean, there are people and there are individuals that you know, we value, but it's also an opportunity to be of service to one another, you know, so I'm always looking to nurture mutually beneficial relationships. I'm following up, I'm sending thank you notes for the tiniest things so that when there becomes a design opportunity, I'm first of mind because it's not, you're not going to be first of mind without taking serious initiative. She's serious about thank you notes, guys, because uh, I she writes hand writes thank you notes. I've seen I've seen them. <laughs> yeah, like don't be too nice to me unless you want a card. Like you, are getting one, you know, yeah, so. definitely says so. So yeah. to synthesize kind of what it is that you said and what I'm grabbing from what uh, what you've um, said to us is that you had these relationships that you were nurturing even before you what you stepped out on your own. Yes. Even before you even realized probably you were going to step out on your own, you were just nurturing relationships and being kind to people because that's just who you are. And then when you look back, you're able to connect dots and like, oh, actually that led me to this. And this step was here and this step was here. So for people who want to go out and do their own thing, there are the relationships that you're building right now, even though some of them could seem totally irrelevant, can be relevant. They have the potential to be. So show up as your best self to all of those opportunities and to every situation because that could be helpful to you in the future. Always, it's just good business. It's just good business to, you know, use your LinkedIn, you know, use your social media in a professional way, use these different avenues um, so that you can keep lines of communication open and open. then people want to make themselves available to you and vice versa. Yeah, 
And then you also mentioned putting out content to establish yourself as an authority before you even stepped out. Yes. So for those who don't know, Leah has a blog. That is lovely. Uh, <laughs> and you were blogging for, I would say, months before you ever stepped out. Yes, months. Yes. about So from December to August, I was putting out content before I ever started Beauty is Abundant, created Beauty is Abundant, and, and months of planning before then. So, yeah. When you were planning, how did you, um, when did you officially become an LLC? Because some people are just kind of doing it, and then they, they have it, they're, well, you're functioning, technically you have a business because there's a service and there's a transaction of money, but you in the eyes of the law are not yet a business. So how, right. when did you decide to become like do the official paperwork and all that? Right away. Right away. So when I say Beauty's Abundant turns two, that is the birthday of all becoming official, the official paperwork, the resale mm -hmm. certificate and the tax ID and all that good, the LLC, all that good stuff. I put in place right away. So website and then all of those official documents so that I could start doing business with vendors and clients in an official capacity from the, from the beginning. That is right. So, so when you're saying doing business with vendors and doing business with clients, I love that you said that for, um, for working with vendors and when you're like shopping for clients, take us into that. How do you, how do you shop for your clients? Yeah. Yeah. So there are several ways, right? So Sandy and I, you talk, you and I talked about, uh, you know, taking clients around to some of our favorite like retail um, vendors, you know, which are re retailers and, and that's fun. That's a lot of fun. You know, it's a great, we, who doesn't love going into Crate and Barrel or West Elm, you know, so you can go that route and you can set up a trade account with those well-known uh, retailers with your, what they typically ask for is your tax ID, which is a government issued number, like your business's social security number, basically. Mm -hmm. They're always asking for that. And I just have it ready on my phone. Like I literally just have it and I just email it out as requested. Mm -hmm. um, so you can set up a trade account that way and then you get discounts that your clients maybe wouldn't get and you can take them around and shop that way. Right. But another way uh, that it, not but, but and in addition, so you can kind of mix, mix these two different approaches. You can work with trade only vendors who maybe are housed at like ADAC, you know, so here in Atlanta, the Atlanta Decorative Arts Center or in LA, the Pacific Design Center or the New York Design Center in New York and most major cities have these design centers where it's like a mall for lack of a better word where design professional only showrooms are and you set up your account and you go and you pick things uh, and then you can either bring your clients or you can take what you've chosen to your clients so for example i love this um i went to schumacher which is a, a wallpaper company and i chose these two gorgeous wallpapers that I'm just like, I'm obsessed with looking at them. Um, and so I went to this, to this wallpaper vendor who's trade only. I set up my trade account and then I pared down all of their offerings to just a couple to present to my client. And that was it. They chose in the comfort of their own home. And then now I can reach back out with the vendor and I can place the order through the vendor uh, that way, you know, so you can work in, in a few different ways. That's such the beauty of having a designer because you were just talking about, you know, going down all of these options and funneling them down and then bringing your client, okay, A or B, whereas if you don't have a designer, you're having to pair, go through all of that on your own, and then these are places where you can't even access because you don't have, you know, a tax ID. Correct. So you're doing it either strictly online or, or through, you know, um, retailers that may not have um, as plethora of options as, uh, you know, a, a a wall covering company like Schumacher would. So exactly. definitely a plus. And then so we were just talking about how do you shop for your clients, but we got to take a few steps back. When you first meet them and you sit down, you have your consultation, how do you find out kind of what even they're looking for before you ever even start shopping? Like how does that work? How do you find out what their needs and wants are? Absolutely. So at this point, they've reached out. We've kind of had a little bit of correspondence, you know, typically via email. And so once we sit down for a consultation, which it's a two hour consultation, I do send them an invoice. We get something on the books. And when we finally meet, um, 
I have about 30 plus questions that have compiled over the years, which they're so clutch and they're just, I think they should be asked of every client that I put them together in an ebook um, that, you know, I've shared on my website because, you know, people ask this question that you're asking me quite a bit. And so, you know, I, I ask the standard questions and, and actually I do some background on the home if I can, you know, so I might look it up on Zillow or MLS, but I'm asking things like, um, do you plan on having a home office? You know, do you have kids? Do you have pets? Are you bringing existing items into the home that we're going to factor into the design? Mm -hmm. um, you know, are there hobbies? Are you, are you a painter? Are you a guitarist? Do you like to play records? You know, do you entertain much? You know, these mm -hmm. kinds of things. So you really want to get an idea, you know, do you have, you know, Pinterest, you know, are you a Pinterest person and you have, you know, 80,000 pictures in your Pinterest board already for your home yeah. that can help to guide me. Mm -hmm. um, those kinds of questions really help to get that initial design. So then when you do get to shopping for the client at your retailers and your trade only vendors, you have a lot of insight as to what they're looking for. I love that you have like 30 plus, that's like a nice hefty amount of questions, you know, that you ask to really get a good feel. Yep. So you were saying that you've compiled these, are they available on your website or? or they are, they are, they are at leahalexander.info, which is my website. Um, and it's the Beauty is Abundant Interior Design Starter Kit. And there are lots of questions. So there are the 30 plus questions. And once you have answers to those, then it's like, but how much does it cost though, right? Like that's always the next <laughs> question, you know? Yeah. It's like, so um, then I put together kind of a, a pricing guide or budget guide that, you know, kind of breaks it down into categories, pricing categories. So you can go all custom everything and, you know, kind of be at the, the higher end of the, you know, the budget, or, you know, you can really get um, economical, you know, and, and which is, can be a lot of fun too. And so I kind of break down some pricing options and you can mix and match and then give you and you can do this exercise with your client which can be fun right so you're like okay well based on what you've said um you know these are the items that you'll need and mm -hmm. we can take a look at how much it's going to cost and and things like that so in yeah so you can find those things on my website it's a three-part ebook and then like we said to bring it kind of back farther before you get the clients before you get to the budget you have to understand why you're even going to go this route why are you you know what what are what are you doing going into business for yourself and so i ask some hard questions up front so that you're not questioning yourself as you're asking your client all of these questions that you need to ask them yeah you don't want to question yourself when you're asking them i find that i love that you said the budget um and and kind of a guide for that because it can be really nerve-wracking and you know um talking to people about money in general in general people are always like really tight when I'm talking about finances. Do you think it's important to talk about finances in that first that first meeting, the first the first consultation to find out kind of what their budget is? Yes. Yes, it's very important. So sometimes people either don't want to give you a budget because they just they they're like you said, they're not comfortable or they just they don't know. Um, and so that's where you can present yourself as an asset to them. Well let me help you let's like really look at these numbers and i you know I, I know that this is kind of the price range for what you say that you want mm -hmm. um so that they can make some decisions up front but also once the conversation becomes really organic and really um forthcoming with your client you know you want to establish that rapport sometimes i tell them like you know if i don't have a budget then i'm going to be just kind of presenting things to you that we don't know whether how they're going to work within you know what you want to spend yeah and that's taking billable hours that you're then paying me um which you know may eat into your budget as well so the, the, the more specific we can get on the budget up front the better i can spend my hours for you that is such a great way to position it. You're absolutely right. You want to spend your, you know, you have a certain amount of hours that you're spending on that project and you want to make sure that they're, you're maximizing them because you can aimlessly be looking for things without, you know, a budget is super important guideline for you to have because if their budget is, you know, $400 a yard for wallpaper, <laughs> you, you know, you, that really narrows down what you're looking at versus if it's $20 a yard for wallpaper, you're like, okay, only these. <laughs> and then the, show, the showroom, like a Schumacher, you were showing us those lovely, um, those lovely pieces that you had. 
they can direct you in the showroom, all right, this is our super high end, this is our this. That way you're not wasting time on one side of the showroom where you shouldn't be. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that way too, you know, you're not presenting your clients like so this eight hundred dollar glass is going to go <laughs> on the shelf, you know, and 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 they're just then really uncomfortable. They feel like you don't get them, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and maybe you didn't you never had all the information to begin with. So that's where I think talking about budget up front or at least asking for it very explicitly um, just gives you it gives you an opportunity to kind of show up, you know, and then if and then they can decide, you know, I mean, sometimes they give a budget and they go over and sometimes, you know, you can come under come in under the budget and be the hero, you know, but it's just something good to talk about from the beginning for sure. Definitely. So speaking of budget and money, (laughs) this is an important (laughs) question. How do you charge your clients? How do you get paid? Yes, yes. So I charge my clients. We start off with a consultation. That is the very, very first thing that we do. So we have a couple back and forth emails or DMs, and then uh, we schedule the consultation. It's two hours. It's 250. And that is where we do a gut check, take our temperature check and ask all the questions that I mentioned. That I I invoice them through QuickBooks um, and then I have a project minimum. So once we decide everything, once I have all the information, part of the purpose of the consultation is to then take the information that I need to create a proposal, right? So I mean, that's, yeah, that's when I know, okay, is this gonna take me 100 hours? Is it gonna take me 20 hours? Am I going to be working with a contractor or am I going to need to, you know, these kinds of things. So, and, and the time frame it gives you an idea of how quickly the client wants to complete their project. And so I create the proposal and I have a 15 hour minimum. So Beauty is Abundant, we're at 125 an hour with a 15 hour minimum, which is the retainer, right? So mm-hmm. in order to retain Beauty is Abundant services, it's the 15 hours, which it's 18.75. It just flows. It's 1875 separate from the consultation, right? So then for the first 15 hours, every client is like, where do I sign, right? In a, in a perfect world. And um, we work against those 15 hours, you know, so they, us the, they pay us and then we get to work. And then once we start getting close to those 15 hours, we say, okay, this is where we are. And then we bill hourly after that point. And we keep track of everything. There's a very detailed timesheet, keep track of it. And then either bi-weekly or monthly, depending on what kind of project it is, we're billing them, sending them an invoice with everything that we've done, and then we receive their their payment and we keep moving forward. How do they pay you? Is it like half up front? Is it the full 1875 up front? Is, is it 1850, 1875? 1875. Full 1875. 1875 up front. So that's the retainer. That is in order for us to start working. So there is a contract that has been worked up you know over the years that that the client signs and then they pay the retainer so with these two things signed contract retainer like you need these things in place to get started and it's non-refundable it's you know it's everything that we Mm -hmm. need to get going and then um like we said yeah you work toward the 15 hours you let them know as you're approaching the 15 hours and then after that you know you're billing so it's 40 minutes one day 19 minutes the next day and you really keep track of all your billable time you know i mean i keep hearing that um you know designers sometimes if they text with clients or if they're dming or if they're doing stuff on pinterest that they may kind of miss some of those couple minutes here and there which add up so we do all of the the billing and then um they pay via quickbooks is that why you asked me how do they pay me is that, yeah, so they pay via yeah. QuickBooks. Okay. QuickBooks, yeah. So I send an invoice. So it's super clean. There's a link. It's just so simple. You work up the the invoice based on the number of hours, and then you you send that over, and they can pay using their you know their credit card. Um, PayPal, I think, is an option, but just super easy. And I don't take any. I don't access my clients' credit card. None of their payment information ever. It's all automated through systems, so that mm-hmm. you know it's really hands off. For me that is nice and clean i'm glad that you mentioned uh, quickbooks because that's the that is the software that you're using for that before you were using quickbooks what were you doing prior to that it was a free-for-all right it was like a mixed bag before <laughs> it really was it was a mixed a bag right? so cash at me i mean i don't have cash out but you know i just feel like that so i feel like I'm, a, I'm in a rap song when i say cash at me like but um you know <laughs> like you know venmo paypal 
call um, that check you know paper check like mm -hmm. you know just a, just a mixed bag and you have to keep in mind that you know these things take time you know for you to you got to transfer it you know here and then you got to deposit it and you got to do all this stuff and um it's really hard to get a picture of your revenue that way on any when it's day. coming from all these different little pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. these nits and crannies and these little different amounts and the fees, you know, there's different fees for each vendor and three days to transfer here. And yeah. It. So I just, you know, uh, after a lot, you got to do your research, you know, things like what we're doing here. I watched a lot of it, a lot of this kind of stuff and learned that, um, you want to be really succinct in your bookkeeping. And so QuickBooks is houses everything. I can look and I can tell you what my revenue was for 2019 uh, in one screen, you know, and, and oh yeah, on one screen, you know, and it allows like you that. to, yeah, it allows you to put yourself on payroll, which is another thing, right? So if you're just getting, getting money, like get money, get your money. Like I'm here for that. Get your money. Right? <laughs> I would say get your money on a, in, in the hodgepodge kind of way versus not right like mm -hmm. of course you know but um eventually um you want to put yourself on payroll right so the beauty of a quick a quickbooks it doesn't have to like they're not paying me right so it of some sort of software like that um will allow you to put yourself on payroll so you're paying yourself from your business's revenue so that you have something to show for your work and that's uh, like you're creating you're creating a pay stub for yourself you want to treat mm -hmm. your business like every other job you've ever worked for you are the boss. you are paying yourself so that when you want to go for example and get an apartment or buy a car or anything like that the bigger ticket life items you need pay stubs in order to show that you're a desirable candidate that you make you know two and a half times rent three whatever it is you need that 90 days pay stubs you oh i can't that. just you know, I can't just show them my cash out. Uh, <laughs> Let me say, like, you can't text them a screenshot. Like, let's not, like, you can't text them a screenshot. You know, you can't, like, get in the apartment complexes DMs, you know, none of that stuff. Like, that is yeah. literally <laughs> making your money in the ways that I just described is, like, thinking that that is possible, and it's not. You know, nah. so you're going to have your back, your own back, and um, get something set up that is really an official bookkeeping and then I took it a step farther, you know, now that, you know, Beauty's Abundance approaching a couple years, uh, you know, I got up like a part-time accountant, someone who just does my taxes when it's time, you know, because that's the other thing, bookkeeping, you know, with taxes, you have to have that at some point. I mean, this, you, you can't really get around it. So someone to do my taxes and someone to um, reconcile, you know, reconcile my accounts, my expenses, you know, write-offs, you know, you want to be able to write off things that cost you money. So photographers, things like that, the more that you can show that you've invested in your business, the less you are responsible for on the tax end, which starts to get really kind of in the nitty gritty, but these are things that you can't sleep on. So um, yeah, no, so you know, you start off how you will, and then you progress. Hmm? And no, you're right. Absolutely not. You can't sleep on this kind of stuff. I know we're, we're getting into like really technical things right. about like taxes and things like that, but I mean, it's a, it's a business. This, if you've ever it's worked really, with yeah. Some, if you ever worked somewhere, there was someone who had to do all of those things. But when you work for yourself, you're now the person who does all of those things. And so you get to a point where you're hiring like a totally separate HR department or a financial person who's like under your umbrella of your business, um, which, you know, businesses eventually grow into that kind of thing. It's, I mean, it's important. It's yeah, absolutely yeah. important. If you ever need a loan for your business, you need to be able to show them that you have, you know, revenue coming in and all those things are really things that we all need to know. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad that you touched on that. Yeah, I'm so glad you touched on it too. And I just, you know, like I'm hearing us right now, Sandy, and I just like, I think of all those late nights of us sitting watching stuff together and we're just like, oh, you know, like there's just like so much stuff, you know, and it just, the way that it can make you feel. It's like drinking out of a fire hydrant. It is. And I just like, I just feel like I want, I wish that more people had said to us sitting there with like our popcorn and our like, you know, our, or whatever, our feet up and our sweats at 2 a.m. You know, I just wish someone had stopped and just said like, listen, it sounds insane. And it sounds like really scary and all these moving parts, but even just this exercise alone of just watching it, you are internalizing it and it will become available when you're ready to put it to use. So like, don't, 
think that you know you yeah. are just doing what you're supposed to be doing because you are absolutely oh my god i love that you said that you i remember when you were starting um this is back when you were starting your businesses before you even had quickbook and um you were learning you were learning so much from everyone else who's also an entrepreneur in your life because when you start your own business you start you know, having conversations about your business because when your business is your baby, the way people are like, oh my God, I want to see her. She's you. You're like that. Yeah, that's what yeah. Actually, we just grossed and we did this. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You're, yeah. Excited. You're so excited. Yeah. And when you do that and you share that with that community of people who are also doing that, they are going to throw information at you and it's well intended. They're like, you need to be doing this. You need to be using Google phone so you don't yes. have your, your real number. You need to be having a PO box so that you can have this. You need to be on Google business. You need to, da, 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 da. you're going to get yeah. a lot of information and it's um, people who mean well, and you're going to make, it's going to make you feel behind that you're not doing it all yet, but it's okay that you're not doing it all yet because at some point you're going to apply those things when you are ready to. So Leah's talking about, you know, you can't just hodgepodge it forever. You got to eventually, you know, get an accountant and go into QuickBooks and get an official service. I mean, she didn't always do that. So, and you do it when you're ready, and I'm sure you learned about QuickBooks probably before, way before you got it, but you applied yes, it, yes. you were able to, when you had the bandwidth, so don't have to do everything at once, you don't have to watch, like, this interview of us, and then, and then go, like, oh my god, I gotta do everything, no. Right, no, that's exactly right, and I just, I'm hoping that someone somewhere is, like, breathing a sigh of relief, because it does make you feel really restless and it doesn't need to because you will get to it in due time and when it makes sense for your business you know these are also expenses and you need to do what makes sense for your business um you know uh, and and financially so absolutely yeah i love that amazing process you know so it is love the process it's all gonna you're gonna feel because you do things at the time that things are supposed to be done for you specifically you know for your path you're gonna um you're gonna feel peace, I feel like when you look back and you're like, oh, okay, that happened there, that happened there again, you can't connect the dots until you look behind you. So you don't even realize why things were done at a certain time until after it's all over. So we have talked a lot about your process and your business and all these things that uh, people can learn from you and apply into their own businesses and to their own path. But you uh, have learned information from other people and it could, whether it be school or, or people that you've talked to or some of those books that I see behind you uh, with those lovely roses. I want to know what is a book that you would recommend for people, something that they can pick up and go, go learn at home. And why do you recommend that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I had a book, I have a design book that I would love to share, but, um, A lot of books that serve me in what I'm doing because it requires a lot of grit, a lot of like fortitude and a lot of faith and a lot of, you know, strength internally to kind of overcome the uncertainty. I read this book. It's called The Firestarter Sessions by Danielle Laporte. And I've read it twice and I have it and I'm like, I could pick it up right now and start reading it. But um, it's really just about... Um, like if it's not a hell yes, it's a no kind of thing, you know, and it's just about like finding that fire. It's about all just kind of really um, realizing your fullest potential, you know, or trying to become your highest self. And that's what you need to do in this type in becoming a, a business owner. So Firestarter Sessions by Danielle Laporte is incredible. Um, a lot of stuff by Marie Forleo, uh, very similar energy of just really kind of showing up in a big way in your life. But design wise, um, I have this book actually that I have handy. Um, so it's a, it's a biggie and I, I usually take the jackets off so that they're just clean and simple. And it's called Interior Design Masterclass. And the reason I love it is because it is a compilation of anecdotes, uh, approaches uh, of world renowned interior designers from all kinds of different backgrounds and just like really incredible. Like this is the first page that I opened it to and it's just like, like this gorgeous office, gorgeous. you know, like isn't it amazing? And so, um, you know, it just, it really talks about process. It talks about uh, the psychology behind it, you know. So something like this interior design masterclass book, um, you know, they have, they have a, 
a chapter on awareness, designing, you know, with awareness, personalization, things like that. Um, I love that you recommended a book that's not um, design based because I, I think that that that's a lot that's that, that that's really important because that, that fortitude and that grit that you're always talking about that you build isn't necessarily related to like one industry. It's something like within and anything that you can bring into your life that nourishes that uh, that that force uh, will just take you leaps and bounds. Yeah, like literally if a client, let's say a client ghosts you, right? Like God forbid, right? Like say something like that happens, you know, or someone, happens. you have this great consultation, you know, you think you have this great consultation and the client, they ghost you, you know, or something like that. Like you can have a million phenomenal, uh, you know, design ideas. But if those kinds of things happen, you have to be prepared for them not to crush you. You know, you have to still show up the next day and the next uh, day. So you kind of need both, you know, you kind of, you kind of need both. So business books, internal fortitude books, uh, laws of attraction kinds of books with your technical design, I think is an amazing combination for reading material. Yes. Oh, love it. <laughs> and I want to ask you what your advice is to students who are in design school or want to go to design school. I have a large student audience and uh, started my channel when I was uh, a student in school. And what do you recommend uh, someone who has, you know, um, learned a lot of um, hands-on training and then had select classes that you've taken? Okay, well, the, the advice that I would give to design students, um, nurture your relationships. Every single person that you meet in design school is now part of your professional network, really. You know, either really you're a student, but soon you'll be a professional. They are part of your network. They are part of your community. Um, Sandy and I, are, we're sitting here because we were in design school and we nurtured our relationship, and it's just been a dream. I mean, the value that we've added to each other's lives yes. over several years now is just like mm -hmm. invaluable, you know, so nurturing the relationships with the professors and your fellow students is going to make the world feel like a lot smaller place and make you feel like you have more human resources. So that's number one for me is nurture relationships. I, it's so interesting that you say that, nurture relationships, because I also interviewed um, a mutual friend of ours, Ashley. Who, is, who runs the Studio Social, which is a recruiting business for um, designers and people who are looking to get employed in design. And yes, her awesome advice- Shout out to Ashley. Yes, <laughs> shout out to Ashley. Uh, her advice is so similar to yours. Her advice was um, get your head out of your book and go out and get some experience, which I think parallels what you're saying in nurture relationships. It's so important um, who you know then um, did I get an A on this test? Did this project go well? Did I, did I um, you know, master this rendering or whatever else? The things that are going to take you so far are, are the relationships. Those, that's, that's how your client's going to refer to you somebody else. That, you know, it's not going to be just because yes. you, you can design something amazing for somebody, but if your relationship with them during that process wasn't, you know, if there, was a, if there was a lot of friction, if you maybe weren't getting them or something like that, they're not going to recommend you to somebody else, even if they got a beautiful result. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I mean, to, exactly for design school. And then um, in every, in every capacity or every context relationships, right? So show houses, that's something that's been a part of our, both of our lives, you know, and, and um, yeah. that to me being on the inside of that, having done two of them is like almost exclusively about who you know, you know? And oh, so yeah. you're part of that, you know, you want to show up and um, you know, it's about being personable. It's about being courteous and, and, and just, again, the follow-up, you know, the thank you notes and the, and the LinkedIn and this and that, like, in a, in a, you know, in a professional way. I mean, at this point, you need to start thinking about ever, every outward-facing facet of you, you need to think about how it serves you in your business, you know, and so um, in, in design school. And then you start thinking about, you know, your content and your, all of those things. But yeah, in school on a daily advice that I would give is the relationships. I mean, of course, show up, do the work, but nurture your relationships while you're at it. All right, you guys. So we are actually coming to the end of the interview, but please, please stick around because I'm about to run through the DMs that you guys sent me and Leah's going to go back and forth with me and we're going to answer them. Please stick around. 
All right, so I'm going to put out my phone, guys. I'm looking at all these questions you guys set. And this first question comes from Tekka19. Uh, she says, what do you look for in an employee? Yes, yes. So Beauty is Abundant is getting to a point where we're looking for, at the very least, an intern. And I would say professionalism, you know. I think that the design industry is kind of a social one, and we're fun, and we're expressive, and all of that. And I think that sometimes it's um, taken for granted that, you know, you're applying for a job. And so it's just like, hey, girl, you know, in the DMs, you know, um, love your work. I love design, you know. It's like, no, it's, it's really so professionalism for me just determines whether or not the conversation continues from that DM or from that email. And then... Some, some sort of foundation of uh, knowledge, you know, of design, whether it's just, hey, I'm self-taught. Um, I took a class at such, I took a summer school class or something like that is, is helpful. Even though I do think that, you know, you can succeed and flourish in design without a, a design degree, some sort of knowledge is helpful. And, um, communication you know great communication so that we know we, we feel comfortable putting you in front of that million dollar client you know you're going to represent the company in a in a an articulate professional way i find that a lot of employers say that that they're looking for what's the, called the soft skills so you're talking about professionalism and communication and you know how you present yourself and those are skills that aren't specific to in any kind of industry so mm -hmm. soft skills always i feel like come out on top people are like i can teach you the technical stuff that you don't know but I can't, I, it, I can't make you a better communicator. Like I can't, I can't make you more organized. I can't, like, that stuff's much harder. <laughs> so I love that you touched on that. And uh, um, if anyone's interested, can, well, if you're in the Atlanta area, can I, is it okay if they send you an email? Yep, if you're in the Atlanta area, and if you are all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of those things listed. No, hey girl. <laughs> Right. If you're all those things, then yes, by all means, um, because we have some super, super exciting news about these abundance coming up in the month of August that I know that someone really special is going to want to be part of with me, and I will be inviting that. So yes, by all means, by all means, email me. Yes. Okay. Next question. Do you need a website to start off? I, my answer is yes. I say yes, but with the caveat that start where you are with what you have always, you know, like don't let that be the thing that for four months you don't do anything toward your dreams, you know, because mm -hmm. you don't have a website. Like definitely, um, you know, if you don't have one or you're not prepared to kind of go through the motions of that, then use your Instagram in an incredibly professional way to serve as your interim website. I see a lot of personal Instagram stuff out there, but then I'll see in the description interior designer or, you know, no, like use that as your, you know, kind of website. But yes, they're not as scary as you might think. Buying a domain name with not your all. GoDaddy or whatever the, the servers are, mm -hmm. It's the, those, even that language, just listening to myself say those things, it sounds like so obscure to someone who doesn't know what they're doing, but you just buy, literally, this is like Googling, how do I buy a domain name or how do I make a website? If you just like Google is our friend in this case, like you wouldn't believe. So I would say, yes, there's something free or for very, very, very less than 20 bucks that you can get started with just as a landing page to serve as your foundation and make you feel like, you know, you're official, you're out there, someone can find you if they, if they wanted to online. Yes, I love that. It's not as scary as some of us think. <laughs> it's not as scary. Google it. It's cheap. It, it can be cheap. Don't, don't go the expensive route. You know, you know, it's not necessary. Google it. And then again, you know, use your social media platforms in a professional way from the very, very beginning. That's going to really serve you. Okay, so Nat Jean XO says, do you have a particular vendor you use for billing or do you keep track of it yourself? But you touched on this uh, earlier. You said you use QuickBooks, right? I do. I do. I'm happy with it. It's easy. Um, and I have done it myself and it is possible. So don't think it's not. It is possible to just get organized and um, do your bookkeeping yourself. I have 
Carly.Ryan here. She says, how long until your business became a viable source of income? <laughs> I just made a joke to Sandy, like any day now, any day. Um, <laughs> you know, truly, 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 I have read, I will speak to Beauty is Abundant personally, you know, on my own, but I have read that it can take anywhere from two to even five years to become fully profitable. Like I just, it was really important for me to set that expectation for myself going into it that, you know, profitable means all the expenses are covered, all of them are covered. And then the, oh, you know, the extra. So, um, the, va the vast majority of two years for beauty is abundant has it's required that amount of time. So 20 plus months to fully realize profitability, which I'm honored to say, I'm grateful to say, um, but a lot of work, a lot of work. I would give it a couple of years realistically. So that means that you need to be prepared um, to feel like you're losing money or to be very frugal for mm -hmm. a long bit of time to get started and to do this, you know, so ideally to have some kind of savings going into it and just be willing to work tirelessly. But yeah, um, a couple of years is, is kind of an average that you hear from entrepreneurs. Francesca9409, she says, what advice would you give a high schooler who wants to be an interior designer? Oh. Well, Francesca, if you are in high school and you know that you want to be an interior designer, you are in great shape. I mean, that's, that's such a blessing to, to have an idea of what you want to be when you grow up in high school, right? So I, again, it's about relationships. Like, I can't overstate that enough. And so I would look for internships. I would look for the lowliest, if you will, which knows there are no small parts in life, right? But I would look for the smallest, the lowliest um, position, mailroom type stuff that you see in the movies, um, for, you know, and a design. I call them coffee getting internships. Coffee getting errand runner type uh -huh. deals. I would look for those in design or very closely design adjacent um, jobs and companies. And then I would just emphasize my willingness um, to show up, you know, again, you know, get the errands, get the coffee, um, organize the, the samples because you're hands on now at this point, you know, you're, you're, seeing this faux suede something or another that you just didn't know existed, you know? And so um, internships and then nurture those relationships because in 10 years, your, your boss, you know, is going to be a bigger deal than they are now. And so are you. And then you'll be able to kind of leverage that relationship. Love it. Dropping knowledge over here. <laughs> okay, I see... Um, I'm going to butcher her name, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. She says, what are some obstacles hey, you. That you, <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> uh, what are some obstacles that you had to overcome to get to where you are now? Yeah, you know, um, myself, myself, and when, and when I say that, I mean the, the uncertainty, the, the, the fear, you know, I'm not going to lie. Like sometimes it's just, you know, especially in the very, very, very beginning, you feel like you're spinning your wheels. Sometimes you feel like, you know, I'm X, X years old. And this is, right. you know, what I have to show for myself. Like, I, you know, I should be, there's a lot of should sometimes, you know, and, and so those kinds of things can create obstructions to the beauty of the, you know, the process. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, just, just crying, you know, just like tired and just like, oh, so, so, so a lot of self-inflicted, you know, stuff that goes on. There's a lot of internal work. And so um, that I think has been, can be, could be in the future if I allow it to be a, an obstacle. And then, you know, I got to say, I mean, this coronavirus, this whole COVID-19 has been uh, a monkey wrench in our everyone, everyone. Our lives right the yeah. whole world's lives so that's been a big thing um you know I mean being on job sites you know has been um 
questionable. I mean, I have a client now, now today, you know, it's, we're here in August and a client from back in March, who's not letting, um, you know, anyone in, in their home to start the renovation. And so that's been a huge obstacle. Um, and the uncertainty that has come with that, you know, because we still, it's developing, it's a developing situation. So that's been huge. Um, but, you know, what's been really important, I've been, I've, I've had a, I had a discussion recently uh, with someone who asked me that same, the same question. And what I'm realizing is that the control that we thought we had or that trajectory that we thought we were on, um, a lot of it is a construct, right? Like we thought we were in control and whatever, but we could not have foreseen this. We could not have foreseen this. There are going to be unforeseeable things. So rather than viewing them as obstacles, we need to be agile and kind of pivot our attention and our energy on things that can be beneficial even during times of uncertainty. Um, so yeah, yeah, COVID and then um, self-doubt. So just to kind of try to overcome self-doubt. Self-doubt is definitely a huge one. I'll get a lot of questions um, from my subscribers about, well, I, you know, am I, am I good enough to do this? Should I do that? Should I not? You know, I was in this industry. I was in medicine. I'm a reporter. I'm this, and now I want to pivot. And it's just like, well, I feel like in the history of people doing things, no one knew how to do the things that they wanted to do. <laughs> like when someone first made fire, no one, there were no instructions. You know, they were just like, I'm just doing something. And then they were like, right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But a lot of the uncertainty comes from partially showing up too, wouldn't you say? Like, you know, I mean, that's that's a huge thing. If you're going to do it, your confidence is going to come from like really doing it. You know, like you can go to sleep at night. Like, you know what? I did that today. It was a mess, but like I completely did that. And so. Yeah. Absolutely. And before I let you go today, where can everyone find you, Leah? Where can, where can they shoot you a DM? Where can they go on? Look at that ebook. Where can we find you, ma'am? Yes. Yes, if you want to slide in my DMs, I am at Leah D. Alexander underscore, Leah D. Alexander underscore on Instagram. Uh, Pinterest as well, Leah D. Alexander. I am on Pinterest there, which is a lot of fun. And then I am at Leah Alexander dot info. And um, the ebook is there as well at Leah Alexander dot info and the beauty is abundant shop. And um, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm a huge proponent of LinkedIn. So just Leah Alexander, you'll find me there. And I am right here in your YouTube channel having <laughs> all the fun. <laughs> yes. Oh, I remember you used to put that on as your posts uh, on Fridays. Do you still do that? Have all the fun this weekend? The weekend seems like less pronounced now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, given, given the virus, no one's really having all the fun. Right, fun. right. Not all of it. Not all of it. Like, how much of it can I really have? Can you really have? Yeah. So, yeah. so I kind of like yeah. took it easy on that, but um, I still encourage it by all means, <laughs> you know, it's available, have it all. <laughs> well it has been such a pleasure to have you on the channel um i hope that you guys really liked having leah on here i intend to have her on the channel even more to answer any of your questions um if you guys have anything else that you want to ask please dm her dm me comment down below about anything that resonated with you we would love to chat with you in the comments all right thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for everyone for watching this video bye Thank you.